Hey everyone, welcome to week 55, day one. This is Monday, and the theme for this week is question mark. Um, I haven't really figured out what to call this week, so I'm going to workshop it while I'm doing the voiceover. So we're going to see how that goes. So it's a big enigma today. Okay, let's get started. This is Monday. This is a new week, which means new theme. I know I told you guys that there was a conversation in the oven and we didn't know if we could have it for uh, this week, but I think we're going to do it for next week then. So keep an eye open for that. Now for this week, I told you guys at the end of last week that this week was going to be a little bit different. In a way, it's still going to be technically different from the weeks that we have done in the past, but I think conceptually it's also different. What I mean by that is the following. I consider myself a fairly traditional artist, and I guess I have to go back to my mother. Um, I was educated as an artist uh, starting from my mother. My mother is a brilliant artist. She is a graphic artist. She loves etching, aquatints, uh, silography, woodblock printing, and that's what I grew up watching my mother do, so much so that when I was very young, she would invite me to her studio and taught me how to do etching on zinc plates. And I think that the coolest thing about this is that my mother really didn't impart in me any sense of, for example, the zinc plate being precious. So the cool thing about it is that I just saw a zinc plate as a place that I could do whatever I was drawing. So if I was drawing monsters, and that's what I usually drew when I was younger, if I was drawing monsters, you know, in a sketch pad or in just loose pieces of paper, I would do etchings of monsters. It just made sense. It, it, I didn't really think about making a transition towards something that was more professional. I was doing my, my monster drawings and those were like fine for a 10 year old kid. But if I was gonna do an etching, I would have to set up a still life and start drawing from life. No, 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 no. My mother was amazing and I really do love her for this. She never told me what to draw. She never taught me how to draw. She never put anything in front of me and said, well, this is how you measure. I mean, she knew how to do all those things, but she never bothered me with any of those things. And I think she was amazing because she understood that I loved drawing and I loved the universe that I would create through drawing. And I am a firm believer now, being a parent, that if you see your kids doing something and if they're enjoying it, teach them to love what they are enjoying. You know, teach them that that can be part of their lives for as long as they want. They could do this until they're teenagers and then they just throw it away and think it was a waste of time. Or they can do this for the rest of their lives and think that, you know, whatever they're doing, if they're playing the piano, if they're dancing, if they're doing graffiti, if they are coding for video games, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Whatever moves their needle, if that's their calling, teach them how to love what they do. If they understand it as something that can be part of their lives, I often refer to it as company for the rest of your life. You know, it is something that becomes precious. Precious not in the sense that it's almost untouchable, but precious as in, you know, the things that are important to you as a human being in your life. So I think my mother realized that if she just celebrated, you know, every time I would do just a drawing of these two dueling monsters because that's what she did. She would just celebrate everything I did. I mean, at some point I lost uh, confidence in her and I think she has like absolutely no taste at all because I could do anything and my mother was like, oh my God, it is so beautiful. She would just tell people to gather around and she's like, look at this drawing that my kid did. Isn't it incredible? It's amazing. And... I don't know, if you have a keen eye, you can still spot my mother in my Instagram comments or in the YouTube comments, and she'll always gonna be like, amazing, incredible, the best I've ever seen, the most amazing painter ever, Jesus with a brush, that's, that's my mother. So, <laughs> she has evidently lost the ability to be objective. But anyways, I love my mother in the sense that she just let me do whatever I wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was to do my own drawings. If I was gonna do an etching on a zinc plate, I wasn't hearing her say, hey, you should be careful because this is not a piece of paper. These lines are gonna be etched. You have to be careful about the lines that you put down. No, nothing. You know, I could intuitively learn about those things while I was doing it, 
But I remember I did like a crab monster with like an alien head and one arm was like somewhat humanoid and the other one was like a huge claw. I don't know. It was amazing. And, and again, she celebrated everything. She was like, that's amazing. That's, you know, that's a great etching. And I think that just hearing that over and over again when I was a kid made me understand and made me believe deep inside that being an artist was all that I was meant to be. Like, this was it for my life. I'm not saying that I may not have had other attributes, but who are we kidding? I don't know how to do absolutely anything else. I mean, I can paint and draw, and that's about it. And I can watch football. Honestly, I really, really understand football. But I'm so much better at watching it than playing it that watching it doesn't really seem like it's an attribute of any sorts. So... <laughs> So yeah, so it's drawing and painting for me and that was it. But when I was younger, I just never heard anything but encouragement coming from her and from my father. So this was it for me. Now, and we're slowly, slowly coming to the theme of this week. But when I started um, learning how to paint, when I went off to college, to art school, I had to like relearn, not even relearn, I had to learn everything. So I was drawing the model from life. I had never done that before. I was painting. I had never painted before in my life. And as I was doing that, I think that I was suppressing that part that was, you know, incredibly enchanting and magical about my younger years. Throughout that time, those 12 years, let's call them, I was just working from my imagination and just doing these worlds filled with these fantastical beings and monsters. And none of that crossed over to my work when I started studying at SVA. And I think deep inside, I've always felt that that was very sad. It's almost like I had shut it off entirely. And in my brain, I told myself, well, that actually belongs to the time when you were immature and young. And that has nothing to do with the things that you're about to learn that are going to help you become a professional, more sophisticated artist. And I guess there's always a part of me that is very sad to have said goodbye to those things. In some ways, this week is going to be a very small step, I mean, minuscule step, in trying to remember. I was going to say reclaim, but no, I don't think that those things ever leave your body or your mind. They're just there, kind of dormant. They're waiting for you to wake them up at some point. I just want to see if I can reignite something that's always been in my mind and in my heart, which is just doing stuff from imagination. So we could have just done a painting from imagination, painting from your head, week, and that's it, period. But I am scared. I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. I am scared shitless. Going back to drawing from my head, painting from my head, this is not going to be easy. I've grown so accustomed to looking at nature, to just observing nature, looking at nature. And I know that there's tons of things that I've been able to collect, like knowledge that I've been able to collect. And there's a bunch of things that I think I understand not wholly, but I think I have a firm grasp on. And I'm sure that I could put those things to use if I'm painting from my imagination. What I do not want, and this is like super, super important. So we're going to set some ground rules for this week. And this is probably the first most important ground rule for this. And by the way, I'm not making any promises. I don't really know if I can abide by these rules. I'm going to give it my best shot, but this is going to be very difficult for me. So... Forgive me if I have a plan and I just can't execute on it because this is going to be very hard for me. So let's go back to the rules. Um, I think the most important one and the one that I'm going to try, try to honor is that I don't want to compete with nature. This is super, super important for me because if I'm going to see the works that I'm doing during this week as something that has to compete with nature, I'm just going to see whatever paintings I execute during this week as images that come up short. You know, they will inevitably come up short. I am sure, I'm positive that there's extraordinary people out there that can you know, evoke nature through things that they do from either their vast visual memory, if they have this imaginarium that is full of knowledge, and if they can tap into it and, and they can translate all that information into a painted image, that's incredible. You know, those people are amazing. But I think for me, it's going to be a, a little more difficult. So I have to take baby steps on this. I'm going to be super, super patient um, with myself 
And I hope that you guys can be also patient with me. So I don't want to do this week and then just go like, oh, thank God the week is over. Like I'm done with this crap. No, not at all. I don't want to do that at all. I mean, that's not how this project works. That's not how we've done any of the weeks that we've done uh, prior to this one. It is important for me that I just almost like act like my mom and celebrate the things that I'm going to do well, even if the uh, discoveries that I make are very, very small ones. I mean, again, baby steps. I think you guys have heard me say all throughout this project that there's one thing that we can't avoid and it's time. You know, the time that we need for these things to set in, the time that we need for us to understand information, the time that we need to devote to working on trying to reach very specific goals. Um, none of those things can be hurried. None of those things can be achieved by taking shortcuts. It doesn't work that way. So I'm not expecting miracles here. It's not as if I'm going to be able to tap into the kid that I was and suddenly I'm painting uninhibited and I have this free-flowing imagination that's going to enable me to produce these fantastical paintings. No, those are not my expectations. What I'm going to try to do for this week, and finally I'm going to speak about this week's theme, is to do a drawing, a drawing that's let's call it a little bit larger than a thumbnail. But in essence, it's kind of going to be a little study, a little thumbnail that doesn't have to bear a lot of detail. I'm not hoping for my drawing to communicate a ton of information. I think that that's going to be my second rule for the week. So we're not going to compete against nature because we're not going to be able to do better than if we were looking directly at nature. That's rule number one. And rule number two is that the drawing that we are going to have as reference, it shouldn't be loaded with information. It should be a very nice starting point. It shouldn't even be the solution to the problem. It should be the first step. It should be the key to opening this door and then you go inside and then you try to solve things through painting. In essence, this is what we're gonna do for this week. I'm gonna produce this small drawing, again, not like a tiny little thumbnail. You guys are gonna be able to see the drawing right next to the painting, just so you have a sense of dimension. So it's gonna be a small drawing. It's not gonna be a super tight drawing. I mean, there's gonna be information about shapes and values and composition. I don't have to follow that drawing to a T. I guess the point of all of this is to have good information to start with, but not a lot of explicit information. I want a lot of things to happen in the painting while I'm painting. Now, why am I doing this for this week? Why are we working from a small loose drawing and why is it our only reference? I want to start to experience my painting a little bit differently. I want to see what can happen if I start painting from, um, let's not call it yet imagination. Let's not call it painting straight from my head because this is not quite it. I'm still starting from nature. I'm still starting from conditions that are born from nature. I'm doing a little drawing from nature and then I'm translating into paint, but I'm leaving enough room so that I can actually start looking at my painting. I know that this sounds weird because you could say that every single painting that I've done, I have to look at my painting, right? You know, it seems like an obvious logical thing. But I think that when we have a reference, be it painting from life and we're looking directly at nature, or when we're using photo reference and we're constantly kind of gauging our painting from our photo reference, even if our reference is just a starting point, I think in my case, I kind of always feel it as a starting point. But anyways, there is a big difference when that drawing that we're starting from is not really inhibiting, is not really a place where we're gonna find a rule set, it's not a place where we're gonna find boundaries, it's actually just, hey, I'm kind of thinking of doing a picture that has to do with these elements, execute that in a painting now. And when we work with those conditions, we realize that we have to really, really pay attention to the painting that we're painting. I mean, that's where everything is taking place. And everything is taking place at the same time. I'm not doing an underdrawing, you know, I'm going directly to painting. I'm feeling confident enough that the tiny little exercise that I made when executing that small drawing is giving me a ton of information that I'm gonna be able to translate into a painting. Now, this is not about visual memory. This is not about looking at nature and when looking at nature, then using my drawing as a memory aid. I'm gonna try to, through the drawing, access 
all the stuff that I had just looked at in nature. No, it's not going to work that way either. I think that what I want to do is strip away this anchor that I usually feel I have when working, you know, either from life or from reference. I think both of them are anchors. A lot of people would say, no, that only happens when you're working from photos. But when you're working from life, you're free to do whatever you want. Well, yes and no. I mean, you still have nature in front of you. And having nature in front of you is like having the most powerful force in the universe telling you what to do. You know, that is your starting point. And sometimes that force is just overwhelming and you become completely subjected to nature. You depend on nature. And I think, for example, in my case, I, I've been working from nature, from photographs for so long that I've gotten dependent on nature to produce my paintings. So I want to train myself to try and liberate myself a little bit from nature. I still adore nature. I think that, you know, nature is where every single wonderful thing in this universe happens. Contemplating a little moment of nature gives you an infinite amount of wisdom. The human experience is about contemplating and reflecting upon nature. But as a subjective painting exercise, where I also want to learn about myself, I think that it is important to leave a lot of that stuff behind, still give myself, you know, these are like little training wheels. These drawings are going to act as training wheels. And I, I still have like one hand on the guardrail and I'm still trying to inch my way across this painting. I'm very carefully trying to understand how my painting is going to be constructed. And that's how I'm going to use these drawings. They're going to be aids throughout the painting, but they're also invitations to do, you know, whatever I want, to manipulate those shapes in whatever way I want to. And I think that that's something I really need right now. And I'm not saying right now as in this week. I think that right now, as in this moment in my career, you know, even if it's super, super scary, like I've been swimming in this amazing swimming pool for so long and I've been looking from my swimming pool and I've been able to spot like this beautiful beach and this ocean that's in front of me and even though that pool can be incredible I want to venture outside and just start swimming in this ocean and right now there's a buoy I know I'm like really going into this metaphor but <laughs> right now there's this buoy that's not very far away. You know, I'm a good swimmer. I can swim to this buoy and back and I'm going to feel safe. I'm not going to feel like I'm going into uncharted waters here. But I want to give myself the chance to do it. Now, there's some people that can spend their whole lives in that swimming pool and that's amazing. It's a swimming pool. Who doesn't want to have a swimming pool in the backyard? But I think at some point, if you're able to see the vastness of the ocean and if you have enough curiosity, you have to give yourself the chance to go and explore. And these are just the very first baby steps of exploration. I'm sure that if I told everyone like, goodbye, I'm going to swim for hours as far as I can into open waters. Yeah, that's going to be the last time you hear about me because I'm never going to be able to swim back. But it's not about doing that. It's not about feeling courage and then just going crazy gung-ho and pushing in a manner that I don't really know how to push that far. So I'm being honest with myself also. So these are baby steps. And for a painter like me that loves painting so much and that has been painting for so long, it's also important to recognize that sometimes we need to take very small steps and we need to be very, very patient. Um, but I think it's going to be a super exciting week. So I haven't even thought about what we're going to call this week. Um, let's call it painting from an open drawing. I think that that sounds pretty cool. So that's going to be it for today. That's going to be this week's theme. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. The results I think are going to be a little bit different because they have to be right. Like, I mean, if I was able to produce from a small loose drawing, all the paintings that I've done in the past, like, let's call it three years. Why would I be even looking at nature then? Like, I could totally do this from my head. But no, the truth is, I obviously still very much so need nature. But I think I have to try to train myself into understanding nature, perhaps, as a different starting point. And maybe, maybe, these are the very important first steps. So we'll see how we do this week. Remember, tomorrow, Spanish Tuesdays, brush up on your Spanish. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. By the way, that metaphor of the swimming pool and the ocean, amazing. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.